Mark the 11th chapter. Familiar scripture to many, I'm sure. This being Palm Sunday. Look at verse 1. Now when they drew near Jerusalem, the Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and he said to them, go into the village opposite you. And as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Sit and bring it. Hmm. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it. And immediately he will send it here. I'm going to stop reading there. You can read on through the 10th verse. But I want to talk to you today from the thought, the power of being loosed. The power of being loosed. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us now. Grant your servant everything that's needed to deliver your word with power and conviction. We thank you, God, because you have here who you want here today. We thank you, God, for setting the captives free. Free in this house today. Loose in this place. Do it for your glory. Do it because you can. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. And for Christ's sake we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Loosed. The power of being loosed. I thought today I would revisit something I said about seven years ago from this particular scripture. And I've tried to not necessarily preach from this particular scripture every Palm Sunday time but I started looking at some things and <clears throat> felt the need to revisit some things and sometimes I wonder how many people really uh, understand the message of Palm Sunday Palm Sunday is a time of Christian celebration as a matter of fact, for the past six weeks, uh, the Christian church has been observing what is called the Lenten season. And the Lenten season, of, of course, uh, entails remembering the events that took place prior to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. One of the main activities of the Lenten season is the willingness to give up stuff. You'll ask people, what are you giving up for Lent? And they say, well, I'm, I'm giving up cigarettes. I'm, I'm giving up uh, pie. Um, I'm messing with you now. I'm giving up cake. I'm, I'm giving up all these different things for Lent. And it's sad because so many feel they are showing their reverence for Christ by giving up some habit or not eating a particular food during the Lenten season. My, my concern is after Easter is over, <clears throat> chocolate cake is the biggest selling dessert, apple pie with ice cream on top. We go right back to the habit. So my concern is what was the sense in giving it up if I'm going to go right back to it? 
My point is, where is the reverence if I'm going to return to what I have always done? And this kind of behavior is a contradiction to salvation. I've always been bothered by the Lenten season to some degree, not because of its meaning, but because of the hypocrisy that is shown. Sometime during this service, we will be given palms, and these palms will represent what the people in Jerusalem used to show their joy as they shouted with joy at the top of their lungs, Hosanna, Hosanna. And the meaning of Hosanna is save now. They also began to shout, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And now as a child of God, I, I understand that Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem is what established salvation. But my concern is the church or the ones that claim to be blood washed, we have forgotten the significance of what Jesus has done. Hey Amen. I, I, I won't bother Easter just yet, but, uh, but, but if I was to touch on the Easter thought, uh, where that all this commercialization has come into place, where jelly beans and bunny rabbits and all other kind of things, things we enjoy. I'm not going to stay on jelly beans too long cause, because that's the thing I'm working on. <laughs> Amen. But all these kind of things, the real message has been forgot now 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 many preachers will be focusing today on the triumphant entry and and of, of Jesus but if you will allow me I, I want to get you to see that there was something else that that took place before the was called triumphant as a matter of fact triumphant means to give or either to have great success now in order to understand this better we got to look at what happened that made his entry triumphant Hobbin Sunday is the beginning of what is called Passion Week. Just stay with me just a few minutes. And this represents the passion that Jesus showed concerning doing the will of God. Well, if I can interject something, it is impossible to serve God without passion. Amen. I'm going to say it again. It's impossible to serve God uh, without passion. It is impossible to live the Christian life without passion. Passion involves suffering. Oh, nobody wants to talk about suffering, but it involves suffering. Passion involves a strong feeling. It is the object of your desire. But Jesus meant when he told the people, whatever you desire when you pray, believe and ye shall receive it. In other words, your passion will determine your desire. And whatever you are passionate about, is where your desire will be. Amen, somebody. So it's interesting because, as a matter of fact, there is something called a passion flower. I remember Ted saying this to you some, some years ago. There's a passion flower, and a passion flower, listen to this, it resembles a crown of thorns. And the crown of thorns was what was placed on the head of Jesus by his accusers. But what they did not realize was they were only showing that he had a passion for what he was doing. Lord, help me here. So if people make fun of you because you walk with God, it's all right. They're showing your passion. If people lie on because of your walk with God, it's all right. It's only showing your passion. When folk fight against you uh, or, or fight against your well-doing, it's all right. They're just showing your passion. When you look at the preceding verses in this scripture, you will find that before Jesus approached Jerusalem, he was stopped by the screaming of a blind man named Bartimaeus. Amen. Bartimaeus refused, refused to let uh, Jesus pass by and not take advantage of his presence. He had heard of what happens when Jesus is present and needed his sight. And he knew that Jesus was the only one who could give him his sight. And the Bible says that Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus said, Bartimaeus said, uh, I want to see. And Jesus told him, your faith has healed you. And the Bible says, immediately he received his sight. And the next thing that we hear about Jesus is as they approached Jerusalem. 
Now, if you have never heard it before, Jerusalem means possession of peace. But the Bible didn't say he was in Jerusalem. The Bible says he was approaching Jerusalem. Where, where he was uh, was a place called Bethphage, a place of unripe figs, the place where things weren't quite ready to be used. Stay with me for a moment here. It was all, it was at that place where Jesus gave two disciples some responsibility. Now the Bible says Jesus told the disciples to go into the city. And just as you get in the city limits, you will find a colt, a donkey tied there. Now this is not just an ordinary, but this one has been tamed. Uh-oh. Now, no one has ever ridden on him. He told them to untie the donkey and bring it back to him. And if anybody asks you what you are doing, tell them the master has need of him. Tell somebody God has need of you. Well, now, now, now I'm going to use my, my preacher's privilege here and tell you that the donkey represented two things. It represented mankind and it represented stubbornness. Now, I personally see the Thai donkey as us, and it is no secret that a donkey has been known to be stubborn. It is the kind of animal that wants to do what it wants to do when it wants to do it. But Jesus said, you're going to find him tied, and I need you to loose him and bring him to me so I can use him. I come to tell somebody, nervous, God is about to loose you so that he can use you. Look at somebody say, he must be talking about me. When you look at this, it's something because now I don't think that the disciples, I don't think that the disciples understood what was really happening. They were being given power and authority. Jesus said, if anyone asks you what you're doing, why are you loosing him? Tell them that the Lord has need of him. The Lord needs him loosed. And I come to tell somebody in this place, God needs you loosed. My God, he doesn't need you tied to stuff. He doesn't need you tied to people. He doesn't need you tied to your past. He needs you loose because the work is so great for you. He needs you loose and he needs you loose now. Give God a praise right there. Well, I ain't going to be up here long. I saw something. I saw something else. Turn this back up. I saw something else that caused me to see this scripture in a different light. The Bible says that the disciples found the donkey tied at a doorway. And I submit to you that there are some of you who are in your season of opportunity. Because uh, a doorway represents two things. Either you're coming or you're going. Uh, it represents two things. You can't be doing them both. Either I'm coming or I'm going. You can see the doors of opportunity. You can see the doorway to your future, but you're tied. Tied with your past. Tied with bad choices. Tied from negative associations. Tied from childhood hurts. Tied from unforgiveness. Tied from a bad marriage. Jesus gave the, the disciples authority to loose the one that's been tied. I've come to this congregation today to tell you on this Palm Sunday, the Lord has told me to loose you in into what he has called you to. You ought to give God a praise right there. You're right in the doorway. You're right in the place where God can use you. Well, you want to move, but you're tied. You want to move, but you're, but you're tied up in your mind. Your past is speaking louder than your future. But the will to stay bound for some reason seems to be stronger than the will to be loosed. You've got to make up your mind. I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. You've been tired enough. God did not create you to be tied like this. He did not create you to be hooked up like this. He created you to be free. And he who the Son sets free is free indeed. 
Well, something happens here that Jesus gave them authority to loose something that was confined. He gave them permission to loose something that was tied up right at the door, right at the doorway to a breakthrough. Jesus gives them instructions, loose him. Reach over and touch him and say, loose him, loose him, loose him, loose him. See, 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 we think that loosing has to do with some outside. No, I'm talking about once you get loosed on the inside, you can go back to a bound house and be, y'all ain't gonna help me preach today. <laughs> Oh, you can go back to a bound situation and be loosed. You can go back to a job that's raised more hell with you than anything else, but you can still be loosed because once you get loosed in your mind, there's not enough devils in hell that can stop you from being free. You ought to give God a praise right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some folk are tied by people. Some folk are tied by situations. Some folk are tied by conditions. But I've been commissioned in this house today to tell the people of God, loose them and let them go. You'll no longer have a hold on her mind or on his mind any longer. Well, it says here, listen. I declare to you that there is somebody listening to me right now that does eyes. You've been loosed. By the power of God. Jesus said, listen to this. Jesus said, when you lose him, bring him to me. Uh-oh. Oh, God, I wish I had some time here today. He said, when you, when you lose him, don't just lose him and let him wander off. Oh. Don't just lose her and just let her watch her walk off into the wilderness. He said, when you loose him, bring him to me. Because the only one that has the power to keep her loose is me. My God, my God. Not another church, not another choir, not another auxiliary. He said, the only one that can, not another husband, not another boyfriend. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Not another baby. When you lose her, bring her to me. I'm the only one with the authority. I'm the only one with the power that can keep her loose. Touch somebody say, bring him, bring him, bring him, bring him. I said, bring him to him. Bring him because the power of life and death is in your tongue. Bring him to Jesus. <laughs> so he says, now I submit to you that the only way, the only way that habits will be broken is by the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, when you lose him, uh, bring him to me. That I might sit on him. <laughs> Y'all got to excuse me because I'm hearing some stuff in, my, in this big head up here. He, he said, bring her to me. That I might sit on her. That I might sit on him. Something happens when Jesus sits on you. Y'all. Y'all ain't said, when he sits on you, you don't lie no more when he sits on you. When he sits on you, you don't fornicate no more when he sits on you. When he sits on you, Lord have mercy. I feel like preaching here today. The Lord said, bring them to me that I might sit on them. And when you feel like you're going to go back on the Lord, ask God, sit on me. When you feel like I'm going to go back and lay in that bed again, ask God, sit on me. When you feel like I'm going to lie again, ask God, sit on me. Ask God to hold you down. Let the Holy Spirit rest ruling the mind. Somebody throw your head back and say, sit on me. Sit on me, Lord. 
that I hold on. Sit on me, Lord, that I stay strong. Sit on me, Lord, that I stay saved. Sit on me, Lord. He said, bring him to me. Don't let her run wild. Don't let her go back to that bad situation. Don't let him go back into that fornicating relationship. Bring him to me. Teach him. So I can... Sit on them. I declare in this place today, there's some folk that need God to sit on you. <laughs> if he sits on you, there'll be no more booty calls. Uh, uh, uh. If he sits on you, There'll be no more long night for her. Oh, if he sits on you, you'll get out of that relationship that is not of God. Oh. Somebody shout, sit on me, Lord. Sit on me so I'll stay saved. Sit on me so I'll keep the Holy Ghost in my spirit. Sit on me, God, that I'll live a sanctified life. Oh, my God. Yeah. Woo. Touch three folks, say, sit on me, sit on me. <laughs> yeah yeah I feel like hotter yeah yeah yes sit on me Lord sit on me God he said when you find him and you will find him he's at a doorway as to whether to stay with me or go back in the world. But when you find him and he's in indecision, bring him to me that I might sit on him. <laughs> so that they won't be trying to get saved every Sunday. Saved every Wednesday night. He said, because he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Let me wrap this up. <laughs> I need to back up to where Jesus told them to loose him. It's hard to serve the Lord with gladness and not be loosed. You ain't seen praise yet. So you praise him from a position of freedom. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you know that you're free, and it's not so, so far or so long since you've been free, you can still look back and see the chains. But there's a praise that comes out of you. Listen, listen, ladies, that there's a situation, there's a, there's a feeling that no man can give you. A feeling that no woo man can give you. Y'all ain't saying much now. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. You think you're free because you found a new bow. Well, you might have a bozo. Not a bow ass. Freedom will come when you know that I've let all this stuff go. And you might be by yourself, but free. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. All by your lonesome and free. Gotta buy nobody's dinner but your own. <laughs> oh, bless his name. Ain't got no one less bell to answer, no less egg to fry. Some of you older folk remember that one. <laughs> but I'm talking about the power of being loosed. And when you're really loosed, it doesn't matter how times he or she call. 
No, you can't stay here tonight. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know it's a full-size bed, but with you in it, don't make it full. It's a queen size, and I'm the only queen. Y'all ain't going to help me today. It's all right. I'm talking about the power of being loosed. Of being loosed. Well, let me try and close this. It was the power of the word that loosed Lazarus. The Bible says, as you run through the story, when Jesus called him forth, he said, Lazarus, come forth. The, the Bible said, he, he who was bound came forth came forth but still bound alive but bound it wasn't until Jesus said loose him and let him go that the grave clothes had to come off no more help me Janice boundation help me Reeves is a boundation that's a good word it works for me No more foundation. <laughs> Put that on the website, Thomasina. Bishop White said, foundation. <laughs> well, there are some people. Jesus said, you'll find them tied. You'll find them bound. You'll find them trapped with no way out. But tell them, I am the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. It was the power of his words, the power of his words that caused the woman at the well to change her mind and run back into the city and say, come see a man who told me everything about myself. I thought I was free, but I had had nobody sit on me yet. And that's part of the issue in the church. You won't allow the Holy Spirit to sit on you. We want the freedom that the Bible talks about, but we don't want to walk like we're free. I come to tell you now, I'm just going to close it. I'm not finished, but, but I'm going to stop right there. You are at a doorway. Jesus said, it's a cult that no man has ever sat upon. Whew. Oh my goodness. Never sat upon. You're going to find him. I'm telling you, he is there. When you find him, untie him first. Don't try to win untying him first. <sighs> Don't try to come across like you've never done nothing wrong. Don't look down your nose at their sin. Because I can turn around and look down and look down the nose at your sin. But don't do that. Do them like I did you. Loose them first. Tell them all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Tell them, but if they confess their sins, I'm faithful and I'm just to forgive them of their sins. And to cleanse them all unrighteousness. Loose them, listen, instruction, and bring them to me. Whew. I'll do the rest. <laughs> oh, bless his name. So I told him the other day in, in the noonday Bible study, I think it was one of the classes, that, that, that the Lord was speaking to me. And basically said to me, all I want you to do is feed them. I'll save them. You feed them. I'll save them. You feed them. If you loose them, saints, hear me really. If you loose them, if you let that person, that relative who you're not talking to, who you're mad at, if you give them the same freedom God gave you and bring them, he said, I'll sit on them. 
I'll cover them. As you're standing to your feet, somebody shout, sit on me, Lord. <laughs> sit on me, Lord. Sit on me, God. The people were coming through town. In a few moments, the deacons will hand out the palms. Some of the kids are going to do like we did as kids. We're going to have sword fights first. <laughs> That's what we did. Or smack each other by the back of the head and run. Some will be creative and make yours into a cross and put it on your windshield. Put it in the back window of your car. That's fine. Some will use it as a bookmark. All I ask that you know what it means. It's tied into a triumphant entry. He came in with all power in his hand. As he came, the Bible says, and I think it's the King James, where the Bible says there were some that were before him and some behind him. Laying the arms in his path. Saying, Hosanna! Hosanna, save us, save us. They realized he was the only one that could save them. Oh my God, save us. He said, I'm giving you authority. You won't have to go look for a cult. You won't have to go look for a, look for a soul. They're everywhere. And they're tied at doorways. And with the way this world is going, they're not sure which way they want to go. There is power in the name of Jesus. Get somebody's hand right where you're standing. Get somebody's hand, if you will. <clears throat> that you're holding the hand that you're holding is a hand of somebody who understands being tied you don't have to know their story you can just look at people sometime and tell they've been through something even that they might be even going through something I don't know how you ended up on the seat that you're on right now but you ended up by that person for a reason today. They need to know, once he loosed you, he freed you. And you're going to run into people who remember the past. But you need to hook up with people that understand your future. Not folk that will keep reminding you of what you've done. Jesus didn't say untie the donkey and then tell him your old stubborn thing, you. Your no good thing, your, your mama was stubborn, your daddy was stubborn. You come from a stubborn household. Say that. He said, loose him, bring him to me. I'll know how to talk to him. Just like I spoke to the woman at the well, I will know how to talk to him. He doesn't need your criticism. He doesn't need... What they've done, he doesn't need that. That's right, that's right. What he needs, just bring him to me. If I sit on her, my sitting on her, I'll be healing her of her past. If she lets me sit on her, I'll be delivering her. If she lets me sit on her. Is there one in here right now? Have a say, brother pastor. 
I need him to sit on me. I need the power in my life. I'm tired of living like I'm living. I'm tired of looking forth. I'm almost out of my mind going back and forth. My emotions are up and down, in and out. I need some stability in my life. God help me with this today. I need some stability, Pastor, in my life. I'm not the best example, but if he sits on me, I'll let somebody know, even when you make mistakes, he can heal you. I'll tell them. I may not tell them all my mistakes because they don't need to know all of them, but they'll know I made some mistakes. Pastor, I want to start over again. I want him to sit on me. I don't want to just be a church attender. I don't just want to be a member of the church. I'm free. I want to be loosed. I want the chains broken, Pastor. If that's you, come on. Don't be ashamed. Maybe the hand you're holding, maybe they'll come with you. To kind of be a little bit of support to you. Maybe they'll come with you. Come on, it's all right, come on. Come on. Make the devil shame and come on. Ain't nobody going to be upset but the enemy of your soul. Who will no longer have this authority, have this power over you. God has sent this word today. To release somebody. To free somebody. Sing it. Sing it real good. Sing it real good. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, there is power. There is power. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. If others that feel the need of prayer want to come, for whatever reason you want to come for, just come, just come. Whatever's in your heart, what's ever on your heart, just come, just come. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. One more time to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Now, now as you've come, as you've come, 